Uh, great to have you with us. Uh, it's uh, 26 minutes away from 2 o'clock. Give us a call if you're happy or unhappy with your football tickets or if uh, you missed out altogether. We'd love to hear from you. 8223 0000. Now, the role of education uh, and the, 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 the role of the education sector is becoming increasingly important, isn't it, as our world changes on a, on a daily basis. And the challenge is to keep up with those changes. And there's one sector in particular that is undergoing a massive overhaul to keep pace, and that's uh, TAFE South Australia. TAFE SA. So we've got a few guests in the studio this afternoon to have a chat about exactly where we are. We have uh, Robin Mert, the Chief Executive uh, from TAFE SA. Robin, good to see you. Good to be here, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Brian, uh, is, now is it Rungi? Rungi. Rungi, Rungi, sorry Brian. Uh, he's the Executive Director of Education and also we've got a, a, a successful TAFE student, uh, Rachel Boyle. How are you? Good, thank you. How good, are you? Good to see you. Yeah, good. Beautiful day out there. Summing. Bit of a pity that we're, we're all uh, we're all stuck in here, isn't it? Um, now we better get the the official bit over the out of the way. Crows fans or absolutely committed to the crows. Right, yeah, that's one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a tentative yes, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> what about what about you, Brian? Uh, go the crows. Go the crows. All right. Well, full house. Full house. We've got that over and done with. Listen, Ro Robin. We'll start with you uh, as chief executive. Um, what's the history of TAFE for those who aren't familiar? Uh, we've been around the place for over 40 years mm. and uh, we've we've been providing vocational education and training as the, the large provider within the state for over all of that time. Um, we have around, it's about 70,000 students per year that come through the door. Um, we train in about 800 or over 800 courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have over 80 industry sectors that we, that we um, are trained for. And uh, we have a, a new training model, in effect, that means that we have about over 30 uh, TAFE SA campuses, mm -hmm. but then we train in over 300 uh, community sites across the state. So we service the entire state. We um, pride ourselves on, um, on being the go-to provider uh, for, for uh, state and increasingly national and, and overseas. And uh, we provide also that that uh, unique service for um, those, those uh, people in the community who need special mm. uh, arrangements mm. For, mm. To, to get. So, do you studies. form partnerships with uh, people in industry, for example? Absolutely. Um, you, so th that's yeah. how it works, and you coordinate that. So yes. you you sort of control yeah. and and set the standards, and yeah. then the contractors come in and they do the teaching, if you like, under your supervision. Is that how it works? Uh, we have we have a, a number of our lecturers are from industry, mm -hmm. but they're our staff or they're right. our contractors. Mm -hmm. um, but we stay very much in touch with the industry groups and uh, local business because we we cover a very vast area, and uh, we we try to respond to their changing needs. We work with them around um, areas of interest and, and areas of potential change because training, training nowadays looks nothing like it did mm. uh, when, mm. when we, mm. we started many, many years we, ago. We've gone through this huge... Well, we're still going through this huge trans transition in, in South Australia, aren't we, from the traditional manufacturing state. Mm. Um, you know, Holdens have gone, you know, closing next month. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, gee, that's about two weeks' time, isn't it, that they're closing. Um, we've gone through this mammoth uh, change. You've had to keep pace with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. And we work closely with uh, the defence industry, um, automotive, uh, NDIS, National um, Disability Insurance Scheme, mm. um, and make sure that our, our courses that we deliver, both in terms of uh, <coughs> formal qualifications but also short courses, uh, align with the needs of those, of those industries. Mm. Now, that's one of the big differences too, isn't it, between, say, TAFE here and uh, Victoria, for example, because Victoria's have almost been privatised, is my understanding. Is that right? Uh, there's, there's outright competition between existing yeah. TAFEs yeah. within Victoria yeah. and uh, with, with uh, so private... So here we've providers. got one TAFE. One. You are the overarching, you're the umbrella organisation. Right. You control right. all of TAFE, whereas over there, for example, there are... As you say, Multiple. half a dozen yeah. you know TAFE outfits in yeah. one town sometimes. And we we went from three to one in two thousand and thirteen, twelve thirteen, um, when TAFE SA became a statutory corporation and governed by a by a, a very competent um, and valued board. And uh, I, I think that 
keeps life reasonably simple mm. relative to some, some mm. of the other states. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, absolutely. enables us to have a, a bit of a competitive advantage when we're, we're um, going overseas or, or interstate to, yeah. to generate revenue. I, I, have, uh, so I know a couple of people who work in the TAFE system in Victoria, and I'll tell you what's a dog's breakfast compared to, to us here. We, sh- we should be very proud of, mm. of the system we've got here. Um, what, uh, so what sort of students uh, do, you, do you attract, uh, Brian? Uh, very broad. Depends upon what they're after and what they need. Um, to pick on, up on the comments that Robin was making, our programs will start with uh, long-term unemployed who, who have a number of, of difficulties making it hard for them to get employment. Uh, you, uh, we get a lot of migrants that that come through our systems where we're training them in basic English and literacy, enabling and enabling them to engage in society within South Australia, all the way through a lot of apprenticeships. Um, we obviously do a broad range of apprenticeships and traineeships, which are those key entry points for people once they get into the skills-based areas. But we also do extensive training around um, diplomas and advanced diploma level qualifications, which can take up to two years, depending mm-hmm. upon what you're talking about. And there are often in areas of 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 um tourism and events which is where Rochelle is yep. comes from um, but it's very broad and a nice cross section across health fields community service fields finance business very broad section and then of course we do a lot around the transitioning people and you mentioned Holdens before so we're doing a lot of work at the moment on on helping people to recognize the amazing skills that Holdens have uh, we had Naval who were DCNS the the builders of the submarines we took them out to Holdens the other day and they were really, really impressed with the amazing capability that the Holden workers have mm. around lean manufacturing and, and their commitment and their professionalism. That They're looking at these people and saying, these are exactly the labour force that they're trying to hire and our job is to just to tweak them to give them the skills that they would need to go into this new new venture. Huge opportunity there, isn't there? Yeah, with, with, yeah it's you fantastic. Know, rather than looking at, at the glass uh, half empty over the, the closure of Holden's, there, there is an opportunity there and, mm-hmm. you know, if we can head down that path. The other thing too is uh, you do you do deal with, um, with uh, the university sector, don't you? Yeah, so I can much. actually be doing a, a degree and also have an involvement with TAFE. Yeah, we, we, um, uh, we're actually a dual sector. Mm. We, we have, uh, as well as providing vocational education and training, we uh, provide some associate degrees, which uh, uh, we're accredited for, I think, uh, six years mm-hmm. um, uh, recently. And uh, we work very closely and partner up with the three universities within this state to, for things like dual offers. I think we've got over 60, over 60 dual offers that we go to the marketplace with and we also have articulations which means that um, students start with us in a vocational education training course or, or in a qualification and then they have guaranteed um, a passage into the university sector. Mm. And Brian, you do a lot in the regional areas uh, and that's something we tend to overlook here in the city quite often. Very, very important element to uh, TAFE uh, in, in uh, you know, regional centres like Mount Gambier or uh, you know, uh, uh, Port Lincoln, etc. Yeah, we have more than 25,000 regionally based students enrolled at the moment. So across our 70,000, that's, that's you know, mm-hmm. just over a quarter, mm. um, which if you look at it as a proportion of the population means that we're very focused on making sure we're delivering the right training. We're also doing a lot of work on trying to bring the training to the students. And so we're actually working across regional areas rather than asking the students to necessarily come to us. And and Robin mentioned before that we're working in over 300 um, in industry and community sites and and that can be very practical we'll we'll be training shearing in a shearing shed on a farmer's block Mm. and so for us that's presented some really interesting technical challenges about how do we do that in a safe and dynamic way and it's led to some really interesting innovations and and one of the ones which i think is currently up at mount barker is we actually have a a truck a small truck that's got hair and beauty salon in it and so it's got washing basins and and we move that around the community and so people can come in and get their hair washed and get their nails done and and that sort of stuff and it's really it's about training the people within that community to mm. actually mm. to to take advantage of that new career opportunity without us necessarily having to invest large sums of money into having infrastructure in a community which isn't necessarily needed to the full extent of what we have to mm. do what's the average age of, of the students that's the question without notice and it's a good one <laughs> we um, we do have 
a number, a surprising number of mature age. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. and we um, uh, we we accommodate all all age groups, but uh, um, like we 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 uh, had our, our magazine in the uh, the advertiser for the first time um, on, on the Saturday, weekend, yeah. which, which is mm. a uh, a lead into to it, it was time for the uh, opening up of registrations uh, for uh, for interest of uh, today. So our, from today, our, yeah, yeah, our mm, intake, mm. and it'll be a mixture. It'll be some some kids that want uh, that uh, leave uh, are ready to leave school, mm. uh, but at the other end of the scale, there's a number of mature age pro- student as uh, mature age students, and we have um, programs to suit all. All comers. Mm. Oh, the, the 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 magazine that you're talking about, uh, and it's available online. The the range, of course, is offered mm. is absolutely uh, astounding, isn't it? It's it really is a credit to the organisation. Mm. We're talking about TAFE SA and uh, the role they're playing in the, this ever changing world in which we live. Um, and uh, we'll come back and talk about uh, a little bit more of what, of what they offer in just a moment. Stay with us. And it's 12 minutes away from 2 o'clock and uh, we're talking about TAFE SA and the uh, the great role in which they play of uh, uh, trying to keep Australia at the forefront of uh, educating our young and uh, not so young people, as we've heard. Uh, we're talking to Robert Mert, who's the Chief Executive of TAFE, Brian uh, uh, Rung- Rungi, uh, the Executive Director of Education, and also Rochelle Boyle, who's uh, a great showcase of, uh, of TAFE, a student, a very successful student, Tell us about your journey. Where did you where, where did you sort of start in in your involvement with TAFE? Uh, so I started when I decided to study my certificate three in event management a couple of years ago, um, and since then I've also done my diploma in event management, and I recently finished my advanced diploma. Um, and recently I've also won the uh, SA Training Awards Vocational Student of the Year, which I was uh, nominated for by TAFE. So. Congratulations. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, g- quite a, g- an accolade. <laughs> yeah. How did you find the TAFE experience as opposed to... Did, 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 have you got some friends that, you know, were going to university and doing this sort of thing? I mean, where's the parallel? Yeah, a lot of my friends uh, did go to uni. I sort of decided to go to TAFE because... Initially, it was more so because I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do um, and I didn't want to commit myself to years of study and um, like a large loan when I could study my certificate three, which was initially six months, um, and then decide whether the industry is what I thought it was, which is hard to tell from the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. So that's why I decided to study and I really just do not regret it at all. It was an amazing decision. I have absolutely enjoyed every second of um, learning at TAFE. Uh, their, all my lecturers have been amazing and they're all uh, from industry. So it's great to get advice and feedback and support from someone who has worked or is working in the industry that I want to gain employment in. It's a really good strategy, though, isn't it? Mm. Because as you say, you know, you, you sign up for three or four years or whatever and you're, you're virtually locked in. Yeah. Here you can actually get in, have a taste, see if that's the, what you want to pursue. Because exactly. Because why should we know, you know, when, when we're leaving schools what we want to do? I don't know what I want to grow, do when I grow up yet. <laughs> you know, why should, why should we expect, uh, you know, 17 and 18-year-olds? So a great strategy. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, um, and um, uh, now you've got full time work, and yep. uh, you're blitzing it. Yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind experience this last year. So I um, was uh, interning at the organisation that I work at now, All Occasions Group, for a professional conference organiser. And earlier this year, they offered me employment, so that's great. And now I'm a coordinator um, of events and conventions. Fantastic! Congratulations. Thank well you. done. Yeah, it's great. Uh, um, uh, Robin, come back to you. You, you had, uh, you know, as we've already explained, TAFE is uh, is in control of the entire system, unlike in, in some other states. We had a bit of a hiccup, didn't we, uh, that uh, made the news a couple of weeks ago with uh, some of the uh, the systems that were in place at Parafield Airport, some listeners might recall, that uh, the students that were studying out there weren't being ticked off in the appropriate boxes or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, where, where are we standing with that? Uh, well, that that arose. It came out of a, a regular audit that uh, Civil, Air, Civil Aviation Authority uh, undertakes, and uh, yeah, it was disappointing. But um, we we have been we've done an enormous amount of work, and CASA, as they're called, have uh, come back in and uh, and and reaudited, and uh, they. Uh, provided we're back in the aviation business in in short there are some restrictions we're still working through some improvements that we still need to make 
uh, CASA are assessing the information that we've given them mm-hmm. uh, as we speak, and we expect to be fully operational again shortly. So, effectively, a technical hitch, wasn't it? Somewhere in the in the bureaucratic yeah, process. Yeah, a, a, lo- mm. a lot of it was administrative, mm. as opposed to uh, mm. certainly uh, no hint of any any mm. safety related mm. matters. Brian, back to you now. Uh, another aspect is is vet commonly known as VET, vocational and uh, vocational education and training. Now, can you explain what it is for those who aren't familiar? <coughs> um, it's... Wow, that's a big question. Yeah, uh, it is, isn't it? Without notice. Um, it, is, it is a different form of educational system that is designed to build within people um, the ability to, to work immediately right now. Um, the way that I draw the parallel perhaps to the universities is that the universities will, will teach you how to think your way through a problem. Um, TAFE will teach you how to do it. Mm. And so a lot of what R- Rochelle's talked about is very much around we will teach you the practicalities of what the job actually is about so that when you go into the labour market and you are seeking employment, then people people look at you and they know that you can actually do the job. And so we spend a lot of time and a lot of energy working really closely with industry to make sure that the skills and the abilities that our students develop and come out with when they graduate actually aligns with the skills and the abilities that that industry actually needs them to have. And that can sometimes be very difficult, particularly in South Australia where we have such a large proportion of small and medium enterprises. And every one of those businesses is different and everyone has a slightly different focus and they all have a, a slightly different priority on and what they see as the important bits. So we will operate using uh, a framework called the National Training Package Framework, which is nationally accredited out of um, the ASCOS, so the Australian Skills Quality Assurance or Agency. And so the students will go through and they'll come out with a nationally recognised qualification where they can move around Australia and around the world and people will recognise and understand what the skills and knowledge is that they actually have. And their hands-on skills. That's right. As opposed that, to you know the the book the book. Yeah, knowledge. and I'm I'm, yeah. Don't, I'm not uh, devaluing no, the, no. the the thinking skills because they're equally important. Mm. But the focus that we have is on the ability for people to actually do the job because what we want them to be able to do is to get out there and get straight into it, and that's why our employment rate is nearly eighty percent. Mm. And so students who complete our courses and get into, into and, and go to the labour market will be employed. So eighty percent is your employment rate. Yeah, that's yeah, well, knocking yeah. off the universities. Mm. Well, it's a different measure, and and again, I don't like comparing us against the universities because we're a different institution. Um, it's worth remembering that TAFE SA as an institution has roughly the same number of students as the three universities combined. So as far as an entity is concerned, we're large. We're across the state, and so mm. um, everybody has touched the TAFE SA in some way, shape or form over, over the 40 years, as, as Robin mentioned. And so for us, the universities are a beautiful um, partner to what we do. And Rochelle's now finished her advanced diploma. The advantage of of the pathway she's gone down is if she wants to articulate into the university sector, there are a number of universities, or all three universities in South Australia, but a number nationally that will recognise the the skills and capability that, that she has developed over the past couple of years and will give significant amounts of status and credit as they go on to university. And that wasn't necessarily the case not that many years ago, was it? Well, I think this is where South Australia is often... We don't necessarily recognise how good we actually mm. are. Mm. But in our state, we we were miles ahead of the curve nationally. And I think it's because we've had one TAFE and we've got three public universities mm. and we work very, very mm. closely together. There's a lot of work that we're doing at the moment over our arts programs and trying to bring together all the different... Uh, all four of our uh, four tertiary providers in the provision of a high-quality outcome. Um, the work we do with Flinders University down at the Tonsley campus, our mm, innovation yep. precinct is another perfect example of this. Uh, we deliver, do delivery for Adelaide Juni in some of their high-end 3D um, augmented reality and graphics programs. And with uh, UniSA, we have some of some excellent pathways for students who complete our courses and are getting what we refer to as one-to-one credit. So for every semester they study with us, they'll get one semester of credit with UniSA, which is excellent. So it provides a real opportunity, particularly for those students who prefer a more 
applied or a more hands-on type learning style um, and perhaps need a little bit more structure than you would necessarily get if you were to go straight into the universities where you are very much a, a, a self-directed learner, mm. as they would mm. refer. Mm. Um, so, But it still means you can get on and actually get those those qualifications if that's your aspiration. Look, it's, uh, it's a wonderful case, isn't it, uh, of uh, an organisation that is much more about teaching someone how to weld, mm. shear a sheep or be a mechanic. Which is, you know, 20 years ago, that's what mm. it, it was. And, and uh, you've grown the organisation in, in, in such a, a wonderful way that it covers all these these areas now. Rochelle, what's what's next for you? Um, look, I think I'd really like to continue in the role that I'm working in and just to learn and improve in that. But I'd also, I'm definitely interested in furthering my education, whether it be um, going to university or doing a different TAFE course in another sort of industry sector. I'm... Uh, very passionate about learning and always improving my skills so yeah that's basically what i want to do and uh, you're a big big advocate obviously that's why you're here of, yeah. of the taste taste system yeah and rightly so, because you're a classic example of, of the wonderful success thank you so much for coming and all the best i'll let you get back to work now <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks gentlemen uh, robert mert chief executive of tafe and also brian uh, uh, runji the executive director of education thanks so much for your time this afternoon and all Pleasure. the best Thank Good you. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Uh, st- yeah, and go the crows. Go the crows. We'll get you back in next week, and we'll have a party <laughs> if we win. Hey, you're on. <laughs> yeah, there, there'll be there'll be five. In fact, put half the five double A staff in the in the studio if that happens. Eight double two three double O double O. If you want to give us a call, stay with us after the break. We'll uh, check with the weather, and we'll also find find out whether we broke another world record over the weekend. I think we might have. <laughs> 